Hi, good morning. Um, I usually don't do this this early in the morning, but I had a rather vivid dream last night. No, actually this morning, but I want to quickly record so I don't forget. Um, I told my wife, please let me tell you the dream once you wake up, but I was scared that if I went back to sleep, I'll forget. And I think this dream is too important in the context of the things that are happening to forget. Um, it could have been just a dream. It did feel very vivid. Um, possibly maybe even a vision. Maybe it was just a dream. I don't know. But there's a part of me that thinks very significantly that God was opening my mind to stuff that is um, upon us. Whether he was showing me directly or precisely what's going to happen, or he was showing me in, in some sort of representative way, I don't know. I don't claim to be a prophet or anything like that, but I want to record this so that, because um, I'm not very good at regurgitating stuff that I have been, I have seen. Um, I end up giving very one of very short terse statements. Anyway, there we go. Um, I had a dream in which I, with a friend or two, had gone Christian friends, had gone bizarrely to. Um, some village in some country in tropics or near the desert, um, maybe in the savanna regions, I don't know, but certainly in a hot location. We've gone fishing for bizarrely. Um, well, no, we hadn't gone fishing. We had gone to just look at um, some sort of um, pond or or lake or location where there were um, rather big and impressive snakes. Now, I know that sounds odd. I haven't been thinking about snakes. I'm just telling you what I saw. And um, we got there and we, we did see the snakes. Uh, they were big or massive, but unfortunately they started looking at people there, including us, as lunch. So we decided to take off. Um, at this point, it still feels like just a bad dream. Mm. And um, we, we head to a location. Um, one of the girls who was with us um, disappears. I don't know her. I've never seen her before. Um, so it, this is not a girl from memory or anything like that. Um, in fact, I don't even remember any of the people. The only per person I remember is a friend of mine who was a colleague of mine when I once worked at an American insurance company called MetLife, whose name I still know. Um, bizarrely, he was part of the dream. I think for privacy purposes, I won't mention his name here, but I certainly remember him. And the fact that I mentioned MetLife means I will not forget him in a hurry. Anyway, so um, we were at this um, location, um, perhaps getting refreshed uh, for drinks and so on. Um, and then talking about the story, recounting the story, recounting the experience with the snakes trying to attack us and so on. When all of a sudden, um, something similar to like burning bricks start to fall out of the sky. Um, I was puzzled. It initially was like small smoking embers that fell down and then all of a sudden they started to get bigger. And not that much bigger, I'm not trying to exaggerate here, they weren't like massive big boulders or anything like that. Certainly not the sort of things described in the book of Revelation. But they were quite significant, they were the kind that if they fell on your head it would cause damage. They were maybe about the size of my hand, um, but burning. So um, I started, um, we started, started to you know, dock for cover and so on, and then all of a sudden, or maybe I don't remember the in-between, um, I'm in this location where um, people that I recognize as believers are being taken out of, um, being taken to a room. We'll go through some sort of slide shoot, and then we'll land in the basement of some sort of building that almost looked like a warehouse. There was massive operation driverless vehicles were turning up oh by the way i forgot to say one of the interesting things that happened when we took off after seeing the the um the burning embers or, or small bricks 
on fire falling from the sky was that I looked in the sky and I saw UFOs um, and I, I remember turning to my friend and saying see I told you they would come and I told you they would come just before Jesus comes to defeat the enemies of Israel that they'll, they'll be part of the tribulation period but at the same time I was puzzled in my head I, was like, I didn't expect them to to be so soon while the church is still here that was the thought that was going through my head um, so it felt like and it, this did not feel like um, in the, the showing up of um, UFOs in the context of you know how how this happens now is that they appear, disappear, and then they are gone. This felt like a an unveiling. This felt like a a um, disclosure of them saying we are here, you know. And um, so anyway, I quickly we quickly moved away from that scenario. We went through this shoot, um, and then we we landed in this location where driverless vehicles have um, started to turn out to p take people somewhere in the region of two to four or even up to six at a time and um, when my turn came for some bizarre reason my outfit had changed and I was wearing a very similar outfit to the guy who entered the vehicle with me along with the driver who for some reason in my head it just it just became clear that this was an Angelos um, a messenger an angel he didn't have wings. He was he was maybe um, five foot eight, five foot nine. Um, he if if I was going to describe him in the context of any um, any ethnic group, um, I would say he looked somewhere between um, by race, by um, what, what, by ethnicity in terms of being. A mixture of black and white, or somewhere in the region of the Fijian Samoan extract. It was he was certainly was not white, and he certainly was not black. That I can tell you. I suspect if I see him again, I will recognize him. But I don't remember his face. I just remember his features. Um, quite a handsome man. Um, he was a man, and um, seemed to be very friendly, but very focused and. Um, professional in the way he was doing stuff he was bizarrely our driver in his driverless vehicle and he was taking us to Libya I don't know the reason he was taking us to Libya uh, but I remember the other guy who was in the vehicle with me asking him um, why are we going to Libya and so on. I, I don't recall really hearing the answer um, but this was a vehicle these were vehicles that were coming you know, plenty of them that were coming and they were picking up what became clear to me were believers. Now, when I say became clear to me were believers is that some of the things I'm telling you that I saw were perceptions. Okay? There were perceptions. You know how you just know something. So for example, I just in the context of a dream, I don't know how it was communicated to me, but I just knew that the guy who was in charge of our vehicle was an angel and that the people who were entering into all of the vehicles were believers and we were being taken to this location now it's bizarre we entered into this driverless vehicle which had a driver but except that he was not controlling anything as in there weren't like there wasn't like a steering wheel that he was steering or a throttle that he was pushing or anything like that he just sat at the front we sat on 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 seats uh, behind him seats kind of uh, it, it's I've never seen anything like this before. The seats kind of folded um, out. You sat on it and then it brought you back into the vehicle. Um, you could see everything, as in when I say you could see everything, it was not an enclosed vehicle at all. Um, in fact, it actually looked quite simple yet beautiful. It's hard for me to describe what I saw. Um, it was all black, by the way. And then we got into this vehicle and we, we 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 took off as in when i say we took off we didn't drive on land we we flew but it wasn't it wasn't like a a um it wasn't like a 
an airplane or a helicopter or even a flying saucer of any kind. It, it felt like a car, but without being like a car, if that makes sense. And um, we, we, I remember we, 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 we went through, you know, we, we flew over different lands. I mean, I remember seeing places like um, bits of America and bits of Europe and, and, and I don't know why, because that's not the natural distance we are in which I've flown to Nigeria, to, to Libya. Um, I remember seeing bits of Nigeria and I was hoping because it began, I'll tell you this, one of the things that started to become clear to me was that, is, it, is this the rapture happening, is this the final gathering of the saints, I, I, I couldn't tell for certain, but some, there was a part of me that was convinced that we had entered into that tribulation period, because part of what I remembered was, um, on the one hand, the disclosure, on the other hand, there, there seemed to be, um, a the, the, there seemed to be an interpretation of believers being taken away from the earth as being um, um, the, the earth being prepared for something better so that um, believers uh, sorry so that the world uh, would would then move on to the next level but I remember trying to reach for my phone and seeing if I could call my mom and seeing if I could call my siblings and and um, maybe perhaps a friend or two to warn them that look if you are still here if you are not if you are not being ferried away just now in the context of the rapture and so on these are the things you must do and these are the things that you must not do and for some reason I couldn't get a phone um, um, okay yeah so we, we eventually we, we flew um, I remember passing through, um, it felt like I was passing through Nigeria, it felt like I went from Lagos to Kano, or, or at least what looked like Lagos and Kano, within seconds. But at the same time, it wasn't like I was being teleported, which is really bizarre. It didn't feel like I was being teleported, it didn't feel like I was turning up one place and turning up on another. But at the same time, it didn't feel like I was moving incredibly fast, so fast that I'd be dizzy, I'd be spinning, or I'd be affected by G-forces. It felt like I was just going through a journey. I could see the ground. I mean, I, it wasn't like I was so high up in the sky that I couldn't see what was going on. If I was so, if, I, if the height, the altitude would have been traveling at that been maybe a few hundred feet at the most. It did not look like we were we were really high up in the sky, so I can only think that we were traveling incredibly fast. But the vehicle was such that it, it was not affecting, or it was not. There was no, there was no multiple G forces that were acting on our bodies at the time. Though it didn't feel stressful. Um, um, we go through from what appears to be Lagos to Kano, a, a journey which in a, even in the point will take a few, a couple of hours at least, um, or an hour and a half, took it just a few seconds. And I remember um, almost like seeing people and wanting to warn them and, and couldn't warn them and, and just going about their daily lives. But you, it was clear that their daily lives had been affected by what was going on externally. But they hadn't become trouble yet. That was the interesting thing. There wasn't overt trouble yet. It lo actually looked like life was getting better, but clearly life was going to become much, much worse. Um, and then um, next thing we're over the desert, we're over the Sahara Desert, and then we see the city, and then we get into this clearing, and this is around where my dream starts to end. We get into this clearing, which is almost like a forest, but with by, with a river and the seats laid out in in um, in in small boots, like or, or, or not tents, but more like boots um, slash you know just temporary building structures built with just plain wood and palm fronds and things like that, which is kind of odd. I wouldn't have thought about something like that in. Libya. In fact, the location I was in fit, fits more in the mold of being in um, um, something just north of a rainforest than a savanna slash um, 
desert environment. But anyway, we got down our 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 driver driver in quotes because yeah, he didn't look like he was driving. Um, got down, gets down. Um, we are taken to our seat in this these boots, and we can see many other believers there, right, from different, um, what I presume were different countries. Um, we sit down, and then we start getting um, told uh, what we're there for, um, and then. This is the interesting part, um, and I don't know whether this is bizarre or not. Um, but we're told in the end that we have, to, we're going to give a word of knowledge um, there. Now I don't know whether that was my head playing with me, or that was part of the dream, or that was what the person was trying to tell me. The point I'm trying to make in all this is, this is what I saw, and I wanted to record this. Make of it what you will. I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to say this is the rapture. But there's a part of me that feels God gave me this to warn me that the end of all things is at hand. Um, interestingly, before I went to bed last night, my wife and I were having a conversation on the stairs, and um, we were talking about a video that I posted in which I'd said that the rapture and the great sorry, the rapture and the second coming of Christ are two different things. And the more we, we look at what's going on in the world today, from the, the financial world, the chaos that is going on there, the Dow Jones plummeting, we look at the earthquakes, we look at the hurricanes, we look at the disastrous weather events and, and bodies that are happening in the world today, look at the, um, the chaos in, 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 uh, in very many different sectors of the world today. And the more you look at this thing, the more you realize that the time of the final week of Daniel is upon us. It's at the door, literally at the door. Which only means that rapture is at the door. Rapture is going to take, the rapture is going to take place shortly. And then um, the great tribulation will start. I remember listening to Chuck Nisla years ago and one of the things he used to say was that it's not necessarily a case of the rapture takes place and immediately we have the final week of Daniel. It could be a few days, it could be a few weeks, it could be a few months, it could be a few years before the final week of Daniel starts after the rapture takes place. And he, what he was trying to buttress was the point that um, the rapture could take place at any time. It doesn't need any precedence, it doesn't need any um, anything in particular that determines that it's time for it to take place. Having said that, the closer we get to what I think is the final week of Daniel and the, the Raja is not, is not on the horizon, the more I think that gap is going to be somewhere between slim and none. Um, there isn't plenty of time left, friends. I, I really believe there isn't plenty of time left. And it's both exciting um, both something that fills me with joy, but something that is frightening as well. Frightening um, because there's many that still don't know. And the better time to leave this world is in the rapture, not through the Great Tribulation. The, the, during the Great Tribulation, Jesus has made it clear, the book of Zechariah has made it clear, the book of Revelation, has made it clear, Jesus made it clear in Matthew 24, Zechariah made it clear in Zechariah 13, and the book of Revelation makes it clear from around chapter 6 all the way almost to the end. And that is the fact that a lot of people will die. A lot of people will suffer. In fact, in some contexts, some people will suffer so much that they'll be looking for death and they will not find death. Things will not be pretty during that period. Um, and the best time to escape, and I mean escape, is by becoming a believer now, by believing in the Lord Jesus now, and being saved. The Bible says, he that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He that calls upon the name of the Lord shall not be put to shame. If a man will believe in his heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confesses with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, he will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
That's the whole purpose of this. But this dream I had is real. It may be nothing, it may be nothing. It doesn't change the fact that the rapture is on the horizon. But then the dream at the same time may be something big. It, it may even have been a vision. I, I do know it was very vivid when I had the dream. And I remember my head being under such massive pressure that I felt like I had a headache when I woke up. The headache is about gone now though. But I wanted to record this before I forgot. And apologies for the look. Um, I haven't had a shower. I've made myself beautiful yet. Okay? God bless you. Good morning. Bye.